Talk. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's a great day to be alive in my right mind, and I thank God for it because I have the power, because I'm connected to the power source, Jesus. I'm so glad that I'm able to come before you. We've had some technical difficulties, the lighting and everything kind of got out of whack. But you know something? We go on anyhow, uh, despite, in spite of the difficulties we, we have. And that's just life itself. You just can't, we just can't fall apart, fall to pieces when things don't go right. We just keep on going and trusting the Lord. So I'm just so glad that I'm able to uh, come this morning. It's been a few weeks uh, that I've been away because I've been, uh, I've been sick. My uh, family been sick and I thank you all for praying for us during this time because it was a very difficult time. We're not out of the woods yet, but God is good and he is good all the time. So I'm grateful for that. Thank you for the prayers, the support. Uh, Pastor Jay is still recovering as well as myself, but um, just pray. And I thank you for continuing to pray. So let's get into, uh, go on with everything this morning. And I want to read this. Listen to this because tomorrow will be the first day of Thanksgiving, uh, of th uh, November. Thanksgiving is uh, uh, quickly approaching. It is one of the most popular holidays of the year for people who volunteer their time to serve needy people. Many people do not have family to spend the holiday with or the resources to cook a holiday meal for themselves. Some people completely rely on social service organizations for food. Most people are grateful for these organizations but some feel entitled perceiving uh, free food is a right rather than a gift. <clears throat> God had completely provided for Israel, delivering them uh, food from heaven on a daily basis. This is what God is doing. But they were ungrateful for his miraculous provisions of manna. They suffered the, the just consequences for their ingratitude. See, it sounds like us today. So we can't point fingers at Israel, but we need to look at ourselves. Our Bible decree, this is my Bible, God's word, and in it is eternal life. Because God's word is my guide, I will not add nor take anything from it. I thank God for the word of God. And remember this, we are still refocusing in 2021 to be more kingdom minded. Even when we're going through trials and tribulation, we still want to be and continue to be kingdom minded. So we thank God for it. Please continue to join us on our Sunday services, uh, weeknight services, or uh, Wednesday night for word study, for our youth uh, get together, the women and the men. So go to our website, and you can see all of this information. So we thank God for that. Uh, let's get ready. Let us pray. Father, as I have prepared myself, I thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your kindness. As I bring the word today, let the Holy Spirit speak to me that I say what you will have me to say. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I, I truly thank God. Again, I thank you, everyone. I thank you, and I thank you for really, really being there for us. And I thank God for our church, Rock Faith. Uh, never missed a beat why we've been somewhat incapacitated. And even though we're a young ministry, but everything kept on going. We thank God for Sister Rolina, Minister Sherry, uh, Sherry and the Rock Faith family, and all the supporters that we had to be concerned about that uh, during our time of continued recovery. Okay, so let's get into the word that we have come to listen to because we have to take the word of God seriously. We have to take it 
is like our oxygen. Without oxygen, you don't live. Lower oxygen, you are gasping for air. So he's the air that we breathe. He's the water that we eat or drink. He's the food that we eat because the Bible tells us to eat the word. And so we thank God for that. So the title today, which group are you in? Which group are you in? There are many, many groups one can be uh, affiliated with or joining in. Uh, be careful what group. Be careful of the people you follow because they can have a, a profound effect upon your life, of our lives. So which group are you in? And the subtitle, whose report are you going to believe? Which group are you in? Subtitle, whose report are you going to believe? And I really want us to get this today because it, it, it just hit my heart about this. Which group are you in? We as believers and people in general, we have to be very, very careful. Again, the people we surround ourselves with, the groups that we'll join and or affiliated with. We have to be very, very careful of that. Uh, group is a noun. A number of people or things that are located close together or are considered or classified together. Similar words, category, class, grouping, family, kind, and batch. Also, report is a noun. And report can uh, be several parts of speech. But this part is a noun. An account is given of a particular matter, especially in the form of an official document. After thorough investigation or consideration by the appointed person or body. Okay, point one. Whose report are you going to believe? Two, the majority isn't always right. Three, Fear will cause us to lose out. All the fear will cause us to lose out in the natural and in the spiritual. For our decisions in life will either be a blessing or a curse to ourselves and or, or other individuals. It will. Let's get straight to it. Again, which group are you in? Whose report are you going to believe? I keep emphasizing this because it is critical and especially in this day and time that we're so careful because so many times when we surround ourselves with certain people or in certain groups, it can take our focus off of God and or the right things in life. If we turn to Numbers, the 13th chapter, Numbers, the 13th chapter, and the point is, God has already given us our promised land. Nevertheless, we, can, we have to go in and remove our enemies. What are some of the enemies? Health challenges. What are some of the enemies? Financial challenges, relationship challenges. Uh, it's a whole plethora of uh, categories of things that can be that way, that can, how can I say it? Um, it's just so much. I, I can't even really find the words, but remember this, God has already given us our promised land. He's given it, never left. We have to go in and remove our enemy. See, these are enemies. Like I said, health challenges, financial challenges, relationship challenges, so many more. Those are enemies because the Bible let us know that God would have us to prosper and be in health even as our soul, the soul man, uh, prospers. Numbers 13, 1 through 3. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I have given unto the children of Israel, of every tribe of their fathers, ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. 
and, and Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran, and all those men were heads of the children of Israel. So these are the heads that from the Lord given to Moses to send them out to search the land. Lord, the Lord gave the directive, just like he will give leaders, pastors, the directives. And then the, that leader, that pastor, and I'm going to use pastors today, will give that directive to the leaders and the leaders help give that to the people, to the total body. So it's very important that the pastors are connected to God and that the leaders are connected to the vision that God has given the pastors. Not my vision, not our vision, but the Lord's vision. So it's very important. So that's Numbers 13, 1 through 3. Now let's go on to Numbers again. And most of this is going to be between 13 and 14, okay? Um, Numbers 13, 17 through 27. The first report received by Moses was a positive one. So it's going to be a little bit of reading today, but I really want us to get this. And then when you get off for the service today, today, tomorrow, through the week, go back and rehearse this. Go back, uh, see our uh, YouTube and uh, our Facebook um, message for the day and the other ones. Or take notes and uh, so you can write it down. Okay? So 17, and Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, get you up this way southward and go up into the mountain and see the land, what it is, and the people that dwelleth therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many. Again, this is a group of men, heads of the uh, families of the tribes, and Moses is giving, is giving them directions. It's very important that we fall in line with God's vision and the, and the leaders that he has put there to do exactly what God has said. And, um, and what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, what cities uh, be that they dwell therein, dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds, and what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether they be wood therein or not, and be of good courage. He's telling the people to be of good courage and bring of the fruit of the land. Bring the evidence. See, this, we have to have evidence. Said he will save. Where's the evidence? Saying that we love. Where's the evidence? We have to make sure we have the evidence. Okay. And, and and what the land is, okay, go to 21. So they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zin unto Rehob as the men came to Hamath. And they ascended by the south and came into Hebron, Hebron, where Ahiman, She, She, Talmai, the children of Anak were, and was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. And they came unto the brook of Eshcol and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes and bury it between two upon a staff. And they brought up the pomegranates and the figs. The place was called the brook of Eshcol because the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from thence. And they turned from searching the, uh, the land for 40 days. Okay. And they went and came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Evidence. See, evidence is what counts. Evidence. And they told him and said, we came into the land whither thou sentest us. And surely it floweth with milk and honey, and that's the fruit of it. The land. See, again, God has already given us. He's already given us our promised land. He's already blessed us spiritually. 
financially, socially. See, family in Christ, me in Christ, God is first. Then it's my family. Then it's my church. Then it's my vocation. It's my social life. So we have to put things in right in the right perspective. God is first. He's before the church. He's before me. He is before all. So, and they told him and said, we came unto a land where thou sentest us. Surely it floweth with milk and honey. This is a fruit thereof. Let me tell you, God has already blessed us. Oftentimes, we have not been good stewards of what God has given us. Let's take money. Well, David said, I'm young now. Oh, I never seen a righteous forsaken and see begging for bread. Why am I begging? Are you doing the right things? Are you giving God his requirement of your tithe and offering? Are you being a good steward of not trying to buy too much? And especially now this time of the year, getting towards the end of the year and Christmas, are you trying to buy gifts for everyone? Are you telling those lies? See, God cannot stand a liar. And telling our children those lies, we are cursing ourselves. I know I'm kind of going back off, off the track, but I'm coming back. But we have to make sure we are good stewards. So the report came, it was a land, the promised land, flowing with milk and honey. It this reminds me of the old records, the old 45 records. The 33s and the 78s, the old record player, they had an A side, which was the most popular song. Then they had a B side, the little less popular. A lot of times the B side song, I like even more. Well, there's two sides to a story. There are two sizes to a record. The A side was Caleb and Joshua. And they're saying... The land is great. But look at this. Look at this. Let's go to numbers again, 13, 28 through 33. Here comes the second report. See, the first report received by Moses was a positive one. The second report in 20 through 33, here comes the second report, and it was a negative one. Also, both groups saw the same thing but viewed it differently. Let's read it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land and the cities are walled. Even the other tribes, the Hayes, they even said before, they did come into a land flowing with milk and honey, a land of prosperity, a land that's so rich. They even agreed with this. But watch the nevertheless. Watch the but. Nevertheless, the people will be strong that dwell in the land. Listen now. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Anak are, the, are giants. And the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. And the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. Caleb still the people. This is Caleb now. Caleb still the people before the leader, which is Moses, and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome. How can Caleb say this? Because he remembers where God has brought them from. See, listen to me. When we're facing life's challenges, when the challenges have been uh, have fallen to our laps and we feel like there is no hope and it seems like there is no hope. And I want to help somebody. This is not something I just heard about, but I'm telling you what I recently experienced. When my wife and I had mentioned about we've been through some health challenges and still recovering when she was in the hospital, even at home before she um, 
before she was taken to the hospital, I saw death. I saw life leaving her, but I had to, and I want to help somebody. In the natural, and it was real, and she will, she will tell you, life was leaving her a couple of weeks ago. And I saw that with my natural eye, but my spiritual eye said, but God. My spiritual eye said, God is able. And I found myself, and I'm, I'm, I'm being uh, frank, being open. I found myself getting weak. I found myself like, oh my God, like I'm going to lose her. But then I had to dig my foot like in the dirt, like you're doing a, uh, back home in the country. We'll get two groups of people on each side of the rope and there was a center line and you pull. And, and in order for the other group not to, the opposing group to get you, you stick your heels in the dirt and you pull. I had to stick my heels of faith in the dirt and said, but God, I know you are able. See, my natural eyes saw death and even I was dealing with my own challenges, but my spiritual eyes, which is faith, saw life. So see, this message just didn't come just to come. I had to live this. Which group are you in, Ghoulie? The group of faith or the group of unbelief? And whose report are you gonna believe? Are you going to believe what you see naturally? Are you going to believe Satan? Or are you going to believe the report of the Lord that your wife is going to come through? So these groups here are saying, uh, and Caleb steered the people before Moses and said, let us go up. This is a positive group. It was two people versus 10 and possesses for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. Now, God has already given us our promised land, but we can have to go in and remove the enemies. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature, giants. Is your situation a giant situation? God is a giant, is the giant slayer. And there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in, listen to this. And we were in our own eyes, in our own eyes as grasshoppers. So we were in their eyes. In our own eyes, the situation was devastating. In our own eyes, there is no hope. And they're saying in our own sight, we were like grasshoppers. And even in the sight of the giants, we are grasshoppers. Grasshoppers. So in other words, they're mind readers. They, they're reading the mind of the giants. They're saying the giants even see us as small. So they're already defeated. They are already defeated because they're saying no way. But they and we, we need to remember where God has already brought us from. The past is what we look at to propel us for our present. Our present is to and living is to propel and pre prepare us for the future. So again, you have two different groups. Here comes the second report and it was a negative one. Both groups saw the same thing but viewed it differently. Two people, several people can see an accident. 10 people can see an accident, but they are spread out in different physical location or areas or viewpoints. And they can see the same accident at the same time, but can give conflicting reports. It's very important that we stay with the Lord, that we could stay connected to the body of Christ. So we all can view the Lord. Numbers 14, 1 through 10. 
To them, going back into slavery was better than fighting for what was, all, for what was already theirs. Also, the Lord would fight for them. To them, going back into slavery was better than fighting for what was already theirs. Also, the Lord would fight for them. Sometimes people, once they get saved, and that's why you need to be well taught. Once they get saved, they think it's going to be sometimes a bed of roses. Once you get saved, all my troubles are over with. Let me tell you, once you get saved, trouble going to really, really start. Because Satan is going to do all he can in his cohorts to get us to turn around. But we cannot afford to turn around. We cannot afford. So therefore, sometimes people will say, well, I was doing better when I was unsaved. True and false. You might, be, might have been doing better physically, financially, socially but you were still dead spiritually. What shall it profit a man if he gains his whole, uh, gain the whole world and loses his soul? What will a man give in exchange for his soul? So in other words, people will say, well, I just as well go back out in the world. I didn't have all this problem. Yes, you did. But coming to Christ are its own set of challenges. But if we trust God, and we get with the group of the believers, the group that are praying and interceding and seeking the Lord, then we have that support. And all the congregation lift up their voice. Uh, this is uh, Numbers of 14th chapter, starting at one. And cry, and the people wept that night. Listen to this. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt? In other words, it was better in slavery. Or would God we had died in the wilderness? We should have just died in the wilderness. If, if we couldn't have died in Egypt under slavery, at least let us uh, die in the wilderness. Now watch this. These are the leaders, the other 10 leaders saying this. So watch who you are following, whether physically, on social media, watch the pastors and other spiritual leaders you're following, whether it's your family, whether it's on your job, whether it's uh, socially. Don't take people for their words. We cannot always take people for their word because People will say in and everything just to get from you what they want. So we have to take the word of God for what it says. The word of God. You've got pastors, leaders, singers, other people in the arts uh, saying and doing anything just to get the accolades. Like I tell people at Rock Faith, pull your Bibles out. Make sure what I'm saying is what the word is saying. Also, be spiritually in tune or sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit that who speaking your the spirit of God will agree or not agree with, with what the person is saying. And wherefore hath the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword that our wives and children should be a prey. Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? See, they are thinking it's better we stayed in Egypt. He brought us out here so our wives and children will fall and be a prey. Wouldn't it have been better? And would it be better if we just go back to Egypt? Would it be better if we just go back to slavery? Would it be better if we just go back to what we know, the familiar thing? And the familiar thing oftentimes can kill us. Listen to this. And they said one to another, let us make a captain. They have not realized or really pulled in what God was doing through Moses and Aaron. And they said one to another and four, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. <laughs> They're going back to Egypt. You know, Moses was gonna have, wasn't going to have that. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. Fell on his face. 
And Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Japhuneth, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. These are two that said, we can overcome it because they remember what God has done. When we forget what God has done on yesterdays, then we're prone to make a mess of the day. If we forget our history in the natural or in the spiritual, we're prone to fall. We're prone to go back into sin. We're prone to forget. We're prone to get in more trouble. So renting the clothes was an act of mourning, of anger at sin. And they spake unto the company of the children of Israel saying, the land which we pass through to search it is a, an exceeding good land. These two saw it and the other 10 saw it. So all 12 saw how great the land is. But the 10 could not see no further than their noses. They could not see what God has already done, how God are drowning Pharaoh in the gang in the Red Sea. They didn't think about how God fed them manna. They didn't think about how God kept them. They didn't think about that. And that's how we are today. We forget all, all about what God has already done. Because see, that's how I'm able to stand. I'm talking about me. How I'm able to stay stand by the grace of God, by the grace of God, because I remember what he did on yesterday. I remember how he healed this little boy of mental health issue. How he healed this little boy in 1975 when he had a nervous breakdown. How he brought me through all of those things. How he uh, brought me through when I fell two stories in 2008. Now it's coming up 13 years in uh, December. I remember when our daughter was shot 17 days later. I remember now that my wife and I uh, and family, we are the three here overcome this health issue. See, I remember. So sometimes we've got to walk down memory lanes and to remember what God has brought us from in order to be able to appreciate what he's doing now and how he would bring us through. And they speak unto the children of the uh, company of the children of Israel saying, the land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. Listen to this, eight and nine. If the Lord delight in us, if the Lord is pleased with us, what is basically saying, if the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land. Listen to this and give it us a land which flowed with milk and honey. In other words, if the Lord is pleased with us, if he has delight in us, he will bring us to this land, not just bring us to the land, he will bring it to us, then give it. It's something like this. Someone is sick and you give them a, uh, prepare a hot bowl of soup, and this is the time of year uh, to have soup for me. Bring you the bowl of soup and you are sick, but we'll not give you the soup. God has said, I'm going to bring the soup, uh, you to the soup and give the soup to you. I'm going to give you the land, not just bring it to you. But then they're saying, only rebel not ye against the Lord. Don't reject the Lord. Neither fear ye the people of the land. Don't fear the giants. For they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. Now, we can talk. We can talk. We can brag. We can testify about how we're going to go on with the Lord all the way, how we're going to trust God. No one is going to turn us around. No thing is going to turn us around. We talk trash to Satan. Satan, get out of here. You are no match for me. Hey, you better turn it that he's no match for God. 
But then when life sent us a, a whirlwind, when the storm of life hit us, are we going to really trust God? See, we can talk. We can testify. We can brag. But what happens when it falls in our laps? Can we trust God? And this right here, they didn't. Now, we can't down the children of Israel because we do the same thing right now. When health issues hit us, loss of job, COVID-19, cancer, all these other different things, loss of uh, family members or family split up or the person walked out. Can we trust God? Now, we talked about how we were going to trust God. Sometimes, now let me say this. I love Job. I read, I've read that many, many times, the book of Job. And I told the people rock faith recently, and I've been saying this for years. How do we know if God and Satan is not having a conversation about us? And that God said, go ahead on, but don't touch his soul. Think about it. God could be having a conversation. Satan could come up and say to God and say, you know, Gooley, he said he loves you. Mary, John, Jacob, Eli, Ron, whomever, Shaniqua. They say they love you. They say that they'll trust you. But you know they're only doing this because you got a hedge around them. You are blessing them going in and coming out. And the Lord could say, okay, you've considered my servant, blah, 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 blah. Just don't touch your soul. And it's on. Sometimes we wonder why we keep going through all these things. Why this keep happening to us? Why is this happening? You know, sometimes it's not that we have sinned necessarily. It's that maybe there was a conversation in heaven. Maybe there was a talk going on. Who knows? Who knows? So, Let's go on with this. And, um, but then let's go to 10. Listen to this. That's why I say it's very important who you're following and who you're around. But all the congregation braid, bade stone dip with stone. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. At that time, to the, the capital punishment was stoning, killing someone with rock, with big stones. They were serious. They were going to get rid of the people that spoke the truth. Watch for the people in your lives. Watch very carefully. When you tell the truth, the honest God's truth, don't you think that people are going to accept it? Always, the fight is on. They were going to kill these two fellows because they were saying, trust the Lord. Did you hear me? They wanted to kill Joshua and Caleb because they trust the Lord. I'll say it one more time. They wanted to kill Joshua and Caleb because they dare to speak up. Because they dare to say, we can overtake this land. They dare to say, you remember how God brought us through the Red Sea and drowned Pharaoh in the game? Do you remember how he gave us manna? Do you remember that? So God can bless us to overtake this. They said, you're going to die. We don't want to hear that rubbish. We don't want to hear this stuff. Let me move on. Numbers 14, 11, and 12. Watch this. And the Lord said unto Moses, oh, let me go back. The points are, God was ready to destroy Israel because of their unbelief. Listen to this. 
God was ready to destroy Israel because of their unbelief. Be very careful who you are following. And this time talking about the tribe leaders. God was ready to destroy Israel. The 11 leaders were bent on destroying Moses and Aaron, Jacob and Joshua. God got tired. He was going to destroy Israel. Israel wanted to destroy these leaders. And Moses had to plead. 11 and 12. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will these people for provoke me? How long will it be ere they believe me? For all the signs which I have showed among them. I will smite them with pestilence and disinherit them and will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they. God was ready to just whew, let them go. But 13 through 19, Moses pleased for Israel. And Moses said unto the Lord, Then the Egyptians shall hear it, for thou broughtest up this people in thy might from among them. And they will tell it to the inhabitants of the land. For they have heard that thou art among this people, and that thou and that that thou, Lord, art seen face to face, and that my cloud standeth, thy cloud standing over them. And that thou goest before them by day in a pillar of cloud and in a pillar of fire by night. Moses is telling the Lord, this is what you have done. Now thou shalt kill all this people as one man. Then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak saying. See, Moses is pleading against God's anger. Because the Lord was not able to bring this people into the land which he swore to them. Therefore... He has slain them in the wilderness. Think about that. And now I beseech thee, let the power of my Lord be great according as thou hast spoken, saying, The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy and forgiving iniquity and transgression and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the father upon the children unto the third and the fourth generation. Pardon, I beseech thee, iniquity of this people, according to the greatness of thy mercy. And as thou hast forgiven this people from, uh, and, and as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt, even until now. See, Moses is pleading the ver for the very people that's trying to kill him. Have you ever tried to help somebody out and they turn back around trying to destroy you? Do all these things to you, but you're trying to help them. In Numbers 14 through 35, and I won't go through all of those um, because of time. Uh, 14 starting at 20. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word, but as true as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Now, I want to move on so I can. It's up to 35 and please in your time. Uh, please uh, read this. Okay, let's go to. Um, now he's giving what's going to happen in 32. But as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in the wilderness and your children shall wander in the wilderness 40 years. See what these 10 leaders did. They put the rest of the people lives in jeopardy. And bear your hoarders until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. And the number of days in which ye search the land, even 40 days, each day for a year, shall be your iniquities. Even 40 years, ye shall know my breach of promise. I, the Lord, have said, I will surely do it unto all this evil congregation that are gathered together against me in the wilderness, they shall be consumed. There they shall die. These leaders put the rest of the people lies in jeopardy. The law was going to destroy them, but Moses, and start over again, but Moses pleaded with him. As the people wanted to kill Moses, Aaron, Jacob, and Joshua, the law was bent on destroying them, but there was a intercessor, an intercessor. 
And we thank God for that. They searched the land for 40 days. So God said he's going to add a year for each day. Think about this. It is stated that the couple of million people at that time, Israel could have reached the promised lands in 11 days. That's what I've read. I've heard over the years and read this. They could have reached the promised land in 11 days because you know they were stubborn, neglectful, and so hard-headed. But even on the second side, the A record side and the B record side, hers the B could have been a positive one because they were fearful on the B side. He said, I believe it was 20 years and up, they're going to have to die out. They're going to have to die out because of what the leaders had done. Quickly turn to Philippians 4 and 9. Philippians 4 and 9. I want to leave us with some positive information. Okay. Oh, okay. Philippians 4 and 9. God will take care of us. 4 and 19. I'm sorry. Philippians 4 and 19. God will take care of us. But my God shall apply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Look at what the writer says. But God shall supply all of your need. And the package is a singular but it's packaged in all. But my God and need is stated as a singular, but it means all. But my God should supply all your needs, all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God will take care of us. Let me say this clearly. God will take care of us regardless of the giants that we are facing. Finally, Hebrews 13 and 5. I hope this has happened to someone today because we need to get real. Things happen to us, but we're going to have to remember he did it yesterday. He can do it again today. 13 and 5, God is a keeper of his word. Think about this. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Without wanting somebody else's stuff. And be content, be grateful of what we have. Be content with such things as ye have. For God has said, for, for he has said, for God has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Sign, seal, and deliver. God said, I will not forsake you. He said, I will never leave you alone. Even if you go through the fire, I'll be there. You go through the waters, I'll be there. So on today, listen to me good. Whatever you're going through today, and please, I wish you could just see my heart. Uh, whatever you're going through today, remember what God has already done. How he has already brought you through. And even, let me say this. And even in situations, now I'm not trying to rush my life. I want to live all the days that God has for me. But even if we lose our lives and we're going to die, we still win. Even if we should lose our lives to COVID, we, and there are saints as well. And I just know one, heard of one recently, a, a, a mighty woman of God uh, lost her life to COVID. But we, she still win. Now she is in heaven, not worried about COVID. So even if we lose our life and the devil said, ha ha, I got rid of that one. No, you just, if anything, you have ushered that person into heaven. If you want to put it that way. I mean, you want to be frank about it. So uh, on to that, please. Whose side are you in on? Which group are you in? Whose report are you going to believe? When it looks like death, when it looks like devastating, when it looks like I, we cannot recover, when it looks like God has abandoned us, 
That's when we have to dig in, dig our heels in and trust God all the way. So on today, I thank God for the message. So on today, any of you out there that don't know Jesus, any of you out there really going through some, I mean, life altering situation where death is looking you in your face. I want you to trust God today. See, we as church people can run our mouths and talk so much, but when it falls in our lap, we're not able to hold on. Let us trust God even unto death. If you're not saved on today, if you're a backslider, if you need the feeling of the Holy Spirit, and or refilling. You just want more power. I want to pray. In the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Bless those to commit themselves to you, to get saved, to cry out to you, the backslider come back to you. Those who desire and of course need the filling of the Holy Spirit, that they will seek you and a refilling of the Holy Spirit. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. This is serious business now. You didn't send your son to play. You sent your son to die for our sins. And the Lord, I commit and we, re we commit and recommit our lives to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Also, if you want to be a member of Rock Faith, you are welcome. Well, past them too far away. Like I always say, we have partnering members who are far away hours, three and four plus hours away. So we thank God for it. Again, I'm so grateful to be back. Still trusting God as I recover. Thank you for staying with us. And nothing was lost because guess what? Rock faith is not built upon Gooley and Janice Hargard. It's built upon the rock, which is Jesus Christ. So until the next time, same place and same time. Enjoy every day of every moment of every day to the fullest intentionally. Thank you.